Hello everybody. This is a session on a very interesting topic all of us love. The metaphysical poets. The metaphysical poets are 17th century poets as you know and all of them were variously influenced by our John Donne. You know that John Donne was a brilliant poet who used his unique wit to counter the conventions of Elizabethan literature. He presented love in a completely new way. He used intellectual conceits. The metaphysical poets employed intellectual metaphysical conceits as against Petrarchan conceits. They employed the technique of shock. They used a conversational style and shocked you sometimes. What are metaphysical conceits? They are shocking. They are shocking intellectual conceits. Every conceit is a far-fetched comparison. Conceits bring together two dissimilar elements as our Dr. Johnson said the metaphysical conceit yoked together dissimilar elements by violence. Whereas Petrarchan conceits yoked together dissimilar elements very romantically. Now you didn't understand, did you? The Petrarchan sonneteer will say, My mistress's eyes are like the sun. When she closes her eyes at night, there is darkness. There is darkness because my mistress is closing her eyes. You don't believe that, do you? When she lets loose her hair, there is a change of season. When she smiles, there is spring. Are, this is so artificial. You don't believe that. Petrarchan conceits became very artificial, hollow. That is why the metaphysical conceits came in the works of John Donne and the metaphysical poets. They are shocking us into a realization that this is untrue. Petrarchan conventions are untrue. Let us talk about the struggles of life. Let us talk about the reality of life. Let us not cheat ourselves with all these romantic comparisons. Metaphysical poets like John Donne employed conversational style, shocking beginnings. John Donne said, for God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love. <laughs> Is that how you would begin a poem? Elizabethans would laugh their heads off. Is this poetry? You know what Ben Johnson said? Ben Johnson said, John Donne for not keeping of accent deserves hanging. Accent, keeping of accent means not for, for not keeping of rhythm. He is writing in a very unrhythmic manner. The metaphysical poets also employed carpe diem philosophy. Carpe diem philosophy today we would call it opportunism means make hay while the sun shines that means make the most of the present moment now you have Kalyani Valat's videos make the most of it study pass now there are free videos in YouTube covering all topics make use of it that, that is carpe diem we all believe in carpe diem we all make the most of our resources eh, na? So, metaphysical poets used carpe diem philosophy, metaphysical conceit. They wrote in a very unromantic manner about all the new disciplines, chemistry, astronomy, you know, geographic exploration. All this you can see in metaphysical poetry. The metaphysical poets started writing in the early 17th century itself. John Donne was a Jacobian writer. His contemporary was George Herbert. George Herbert was a religious metaphysical poet. There are both religious metaphysical poet and <laughs> irreligious metaphysical poets because some of them wrote against religion also. I mean, 
in a funny way, in a metaphysical conceit way. Challenging God. You know, John Dunn wrote Batter My Heart, one of his holy sonnets. You already know about it. Where he asked God to rape him. God, ravish me as if I am a maiden so that I will be chaste. Is that the way to speak to God? How sacrilegious. So I was saying, George Herbert, John Dunn, etc. were very early metaphysical poets from the early 17th century. Some of them came at the end of the 17th century. Civil war, restoration period. So they did not live at one time. They were spread out. Now, some of the metaphysical poets were also cavalier poets. What are cavalier poets? They are the poets who were also soldiers fighting for Charles I. Charles I, remember? The king who was beheaded. So guys, some of the metaphysical poets were cavaliers. Tell me their names. Can you post in the chat box? Who are the cavalier metaphysicals? They are Robert Herrick and Thomas Carew. Robert Herrick is the author of Hesperidus. Hesperidus is a group of poems, metaphysical poems, at the end of which we have devotional lyrics called Noble Numbers. Herrick was a poet who did not get married. He was a bachelor. He lived up to 83 years of age. And he wrote in a very uh, conventional style compared to other metaphysicals. Usually metaphysical poets, poets don't write about nature. They don't write nature descriptions. But Herrick did. Herrick wrote poems like to violets, to daffodils, Upon Julia's clothes. <laughs> and uh, Robert Herrick was a cavalier poet. Meaning he was influenced by John, Ben Johnson. And he was a metaphysical poet. Meaning he was influenced by John Donne. Then there was Thomas Carew. Thomas Carew wrote a very violent poem called A Rapture. And he's also remembered for an elegy that he wrote for our John Donne. Where he calls John Donne the monarch of wit. Now I told you a very important group of poets were the religious metaphysicals. George Herbert who was like a sage among the metaphysicals, was important. Robert, uh, George Herbert was a clergyman and he wrote a lot of religious poems. He never wrote for any woman, no. And all his poems, uh, never he published them. On his deathbed, he gave his poems to Nicolas Ferrar, his friend, and said, if you think they are worthy of publication, if it will help somebody, publish them. Otherwise, burn them. Nicolas Ferraz published them as the temple. The temple means the poet. The poet is like a temple of God. George Herbert has written very famous poems like the collar, the pulley, the altar. He wrote pattern poetry. You know the modernist poet E.E. E. Cummings. The poem itself looks like a picture. George Herbert's famous pattern poem is Clue, clue, I'm giving clue. Easter wings. Easter wings. The poem looks like a pair of wings. Wow. Must be very difficult to write like that. And guys, other metaphysical poets. Religious, religious, mind you. George Herbert wrote the temple. George Herbert's follower, one disciple was there. Richard Crashaw. My code when I was a student was, he crashed on the steps to the temple. Because when George Herbert wrote temple, Richard Crashaw wrote steps to the temple. If George Herbert's po poem, book of poems is temple, Richard Crashaw said, I am nowhere near my master George Herbert. My book is like steps to the temple. Did you understand? 
Another religious metaphysical is Henry Vaughan. Vaughan. V-A-U-G-H-A-N. Henry Vaughan wrote, Silex Scintillance. Stone Heart. The poet's heart is made of stone. You need God's fire to break fire, God's steel to break fire from it. It's a Christian symbol. Silex, scintillance. He also wrote a very famous poem. You might know that. It inspired Henry Vaughan's poem that inspired Wordsworth's immortality ode. Tell me. Tell me in the comment box, which is the poem by George Herbert that inspired Wordsworth's immortality ode? I'm waiting. It is The Retreat, which is a poem about childhood. And guys, there is another famous poem he wrote comparing the journey of the soul to a waterfall. The waterfall. Another religious metaphysical is there. Trahern, Thomas Trahern, who wrote centuries of meditations. Now, I have left out two major names. What are they? Abraham Cowley and Andrew Marvel. Abraham Cowley was a child prodigy, very famous man during this time. Abraham Cowley was a royalist, okay? Royalist during the Civil War. He wrote many poems. One is the famous book of love affectation, poems of love affectation called The Mistress. So much love. Affectation, hypocrisy. Another important book by Abraham Cowley is Pindaric Odes, where he developed a variation of the Pindaric Ode. Irregular Ode. I know you didn't understand, I will explain. Pindaric code is very strict stanzaic form. Strophe, antistrophe, epode. Three stanzas should be there. Very difficult to write. Abraham Cowley changed that style and wrote irregular ode. Which means what? You can write irregularly whatever stanza you want. That is irregular ode. Immortality ode by Wordsworth I men mentioned just now. Immortality ode is an irregular ode. And guys, Andrew Marvel is very important. He was the Puritan among the metaphysicals. And what is the relationship between Andrew Marvel and John Milton? Tell me the answer. You want options? Okay, I'll give you options. I heard one of you say, ma'am, give us options. Okay. Option A, Andrew Marvel was the brother-in-law of John Milton. Option B, Andrew Marvel was the neighbor of John Milton. Option C, Andrew Marvel was a shopkeeper near John Milton's house. Option D, Andrew Marvel was the scribe of Milton. When Milton went blind, he used Andrew Marvel as the scribe. Very difficult question it is. What is the relationship between Andrew Marvel and John Milton? Of course, he was the scribe. Option D, correct. All of you said correctly. Option D. Andrew Marvel and Milton were closely associated. Politically also. Andrew Marvel, everybody knows, wrote to his coy mistress. The best expression of Carpe Diem philosophy, isn't it? He also wrote a number of other important poems. The Garden, Definition of Love, Upon Appleton House, Bermudas. Are that poem is not about what you wear at home. That poem is about the island of Bermudas. The island of Bermudas. And a group of rowers are singing the song. These are poems by Andrew Marvel. And the metaphysical school was not a self-concerted school. Okay, we are all metaphysical poets. From tomorrow, we will all write metaphysical poetry. Like that, nobody decided. The f at first, metaphysical was a derogatory term. It was used to attack these poets. It was William Drummond of Hawthorne Den, a contemporary of Ben Jonson. Did you know Ben Johnson wrote Conversations with Drummond, one book. 
that William Drummond of Hawthorne then was the first man to apply the term metaphysics with, uh, uh, in association with Dunn. He didn't like Dunn's poetry. And later Dryden said Dunn affects the metaphysics. Affectation means pretension. Conceited. Dunn is pretending to be like metaphysical philosophers when actually he is writing cheap poetry about physical love. That is the meaning of Dryden saying Dunn affects the metaphysics. And then in life of Cowley, Dr. Johnson called them the metaphysical school. You know, a heterogeneous group of writers who used heterogeneous ideas yoked by violence together. He was also attacking the metaphysical poets. The metaphysical poets and Dunn got respectability only because of our who gave respectability to metaphysical poets. Tell me in the chat box. Bolo, bolo, bolo. I'm waiting. Yes, you said it. T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot in the seminal essay, the English metaphysical poets praised them for unification of sensibility. Dunn and the metaphysical poets combine the head and the heart. Creativity and criticism combined in metaphysical poetry, unification of sensibility. T.S. Eliot said that in the 17th century, after the metaphysical poets, a dissociation of sensibility set in. The head and the heart are separated. Dissociation of sensibility. The Augustan poets used only head. The romantic poets used only heart. T.S. Eliot did not like the influence of Dryden and later writers. Milton also, he didn't like. He praised the metaphysical poets for their unification of sensibility and said, this is the solution for the modernist problem of fragmentation. So no modernist poets, everybody listen, you should employ Unification of sensibility, okay, T.S. Eliot said. <laughs> Did you understand? Dunn is considered a very great poet today. Metaphysical poets are very great poets. Another point, guys. Metaphysical poets take an ideal situation, ideal love, and distort it. They take an ideal picture and then distort it like this. This is metaphysical poetry. Ideal is distorted. In art, in painting, sculpture, exactly this was there at that time. 17th century art movement, mannerism. Have you heard of that? Google search, karo, okay? You will see pictures. Mannerism was a movement in art and sculpture and even architecture. That is analogous to metaphysical poetry. Same distortion, they both of these movements employed. Will you remember? Will you look up? I hope you have been noting down the points. I hope you have been reading extra. It's very important. I don't want to give you any shortcut so that you will somehow pass exams. That is not the aim. I want you to have real thorough knowledge so that you will be great scholars. Did you understand guys? You have to read extra. You have to research. NTA net. Set etc. are becoming more and more research oriented. Central University standards of research, analytical thinking is expected in these exams, which is easy. All that you have to do is research, read extra, explore on your own, then you will emerge as true scholars. Please don't believe it. When somebody tells you that you can get enough knowledge in 10 days or 10 hours, that is not possible. Sorry, you can get knowledge in probably 10 months or if you're lucky, if you're hardworking 6 months. But you have to study the basics properly, do extra research, get real solid knowledge. Remember that, okay? And that will help you. So that was a very deep video and discussion on metaphysical poets. Until the next video, bye bye, happy reading.